Danger Dolan, why is World of Warcraft losing 3 million subscribers in a short 3 month period? And let me just say up front, I've been critical of World of Warcraft in the past and I don't plan on shitting all over it in this video. But if you want to know the specifics of exactly why people have been leaving in droves, I suggest you check out some videos on other channels such as Bellular Gaming, Hilo vs Babyface, Asmongold, Torture Vision, Big Nash Gaming, and Wow Crondor. They all have videos linked down below. But allow me to give my two cents on what I think happened at a Blizzard HQ during this ridiculousness and bad. So the first red flag for me about why Wall of the Journal might not be going so well during development was when a couple of big players at Blizzard just flat out left the company. It was Ghostcrawler and Rob Pardo. Now Ghostcrawler was pretty much the man responsible for getting the Blizzard developers to have an open channel with the players, the player base, and get them talking to each other. And he left, and Rob Pardo, he had been absent since around Wrath of the Lich King, uh, and he came back temporarily to help develop Wall of the Drenal. And then he left the company very shortly afterwards. Now, there are two other game directors that were around for, you know, the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. So Rob Pardo was one of them. He also had Jeffrey Kaplan, who left around about Wrath of the Lich King, and is now still a Blizzard, working on Overwatch, alongside Blizzard's A-Team ever since Project Titan, the successor to WoW, was scrapped and turned into Overwatch. The last game director who's been around since about the Burning Crusade is Tom Chilton, and he is currently the sole game director for Warlords of Draenor. He's also the man responsible for the future of World of Warcraft. So why am I telling you about these random game developers and directors that work at Blizzard and work on World of Warcraft? Well, what I'm trying to get across here is that that A team that used to work on World of Warcraft in its prime, around vanilla, you know, TBC, Wrath, they're all gone now. They're all leaving. And at the moment, they're all focusing on Blizzard's newer projects, such as Hearthstone, such as Overwatch, such as Heroes of the Storm. And World of Warcraft is now, like it or not, kind of a, a B listing or a C listing of their priority lists of stuff that they should focus on and, you know, improve and make good. And don't get me wrong, all of the journal, as, as many problems as it's had, it has some good sides, such as the raids and dungeon encounters. Those are still amazing. They're overseen by the encounter designer, Ian Azacostas, who joined just before Wrath of the Lich King launched, and raids have been freaking good for quite a long time now. Unfortunately, raids are overused in three different difficulty levels and dungeons just don't have any incentive to replay them. So you can get a developer doing something really good at the company and then someone else in the company decides to use it in the wrong way and it just doesn't, doesn't work at all. And now we turn to some tweets and Facebook messages starting with Between the Blues who asks thoughts on Mythic and Time Walker Dungeons. So you want to know my thoughts? Mythic Dungeons? Potentially boring. Especially if, when you have higher gear from the new raids, the Mythic difficulty just turns out to basically be the same difficulty as Heroic Dungeons back when the World of Draenor expansion launched. So nothing has really changed, they just increased the numbers to compensate for the fact that you have higher gear now. That's not good. But, Blizzard have said that they're going to be adding extra mechanics harder mechanics to make the dungeons actually challenging and, you know, something new. So that's okay. Now I've personally always wanted the Time Walker dungeons, for those that don't know, it just means you have low level dungeons scaled up to max level, which we are seeing with Wrath and Burning Crusade dungeons. Uh, I even personally spoke to Ian as a coastus uh, when I was in City about how I wanted Time Walker dungeons in the game, and I appreciate that they really, uh, they added them in, right? I'm also disappointed that they can't scale these dungeons down to a low level. So, as in, you could be level 15 and play a Wrath of the Lich King dungeon with friends. You know, someone who's just starting out the game. 
Uh, there's no new mechanics in these Time Walker dungeons. They are too ridiculously easy. And clearly all I've done is tweak the numbers. <laughs> I, I personally was expecting them to go in and actually, you know, fix them. Not just scale it and call it a day. Otherwise, what's the point? Just, just don't add them in. And uh, especially if it's just going to be weekend only. <sighs> why, why even, why even make the effort? You know, just, just leave them out. Put something else in. Uh, I pre as I said, I appreciate that they put them in, but in this current form, I'm wondering why they even made the effort. Now Zerstal asks, Dd, how would you improve Walls of Draenor in an attempt to prevent such a large subscription decrease? Well, for a start, don't have launch issues. The first week, the game was basically unplayable unless you were smart enough to move to a lower population realm just before the avalanche of BS just flooded in and messed up everything. Uh, also, make patch content contain more content every expansion instead of less every expansion, otherwise it just looks sloppy. And speaking of sloppy, releasing this subpar content patches it, it isn't what blizzard is about right it, it's still enough <laughs> like it's blizzard has never been about just producing enough you know there was the mindset that they'd cancel a game or they would release it in its perfect format they would delay it whatever it doesn't matter now unfortunately you gotta give the world of warcraft the benefit of the doubt it is a subscription model it's not a game like starcraft which you can delay until it's acceptable before release and you can't just cancel it like starcraft ghost i mean imagine if tomorrow blizzard said nah we're done no more wow because we don't think the next patch is good enough that's not gonna happen so <laughs> like there's not much you can do there it just sucks they have to produce this stuff for the subscribers but they really need to sort out their development team. So apparently, oh, they recruited hundreds of new employees. Are these new employees just lazy? Uh, have they not been trained up yet? I mean, they, they said that the team was sorted at the end of Mr. Pandaya. What happened? Like, what are these guys doing? Are they working on the next expansion? Like, I didn't believe that last expansion. I, I don't know what's going on there. Like, none of us know what's going on there, unless there was some insider at Blizzard that came out and said, oh, they're fucked up. They recruited all these 12-year-old kids, and the kids are only producing Minecraft levels, and it just, nothing works, and nothing to do with World of Warcraft, and we're paying them too much for that. Shanker King Totem, the fact that Blizzard won't change anything until the next expansion, promised to work and cut 50% of it come release. That's why he thinks that there's been a, subs a subscription drop. Now, me personally, I think they're done with announcing these big lofty plans at BlizzCon. They're probably just going to aim for like a small expansion and then hopefully deliver much more than that to uh, turn things around. Either that or every sentence before any feature is announced at BlizzCon will start with This is not a promise. From Facebook, Matt Bellin says, Talk about how they've progressively dumbed the game's difficulty down to the point where all classes have a 3 to 4 button rotation that the content can literally be completed within a day of release because of lack of difficulty. That in turn creates a problem. Those of us who play beat content down like it's nothing, then have nothing to do, so we unsubscribe for six months. Okay, here's the thing, right? I think the opposite. I actually personally think they've refined classes, but kept the complexity and removed the fluff and nonsense, which is what their intention was. Like, it's not like they diabloed the game or something where, you know, you only have like six buttons on your hotbar. Like, that's not a thing. Like, we have plenty of stuff to plenty of complexity there and the content is harder than ever the problem isn't that right mythic difficulty is fucking hard man the problem is they overuse those difficulty levels you know in in lfr normal heroic mythic and then i'm sure next expansion left super mythic and lfr version of mythic i don't fucking know see unfortunately lfr dilutes this uh this newbie pool because once people have seen the bosses on the, uh, the the tourist mode, 
A lot of people aren't going to make the effort to progress to normal mode, and even though we didn't see it initially, after a while it kind of kills recruitment. Like, I mean, if you've seen the content, you've seen all the bosses, like, who gives a shit, man? Unless you just like raiding, and a lot of the new people, they don't know they like raiding because they probably haven't tried it, because they've seen everything. So, I, I think two difficulty levels is fine, but beyond that, this ridiculous four raid level nonsense, and you kind of require a different type of content to keep people engaged. Like if dungeons were part of the tier and there was some super raid level hard. So instead of having the mythic level of, uh, of raids, you, you can have a few... Like you, you basically say to your group A, split up and do these, uh, these five man bosses with your team. Uh, something like that where it scales up, you know, six, seven people. I don't know, something like that. Uh, some, something that's different than just doing the same bosses on each difficulty level uh, until you get to Mythic where it's slightly changed, but not really much. Luke Rollins, I think the reason people are unsubbing is the fact that the hype train is gone and the content flub at Endgame is horrible. It feels like you're not in a guild, you're not in a raid team, there is nothing to do but stuff around the garrison. What are your thoughts? Well, honestly, this is every expansion. Now I always say, you come back when an expansion launches, stick around for a few weeks, and every time there's a patch launch, come back, check it out, you might have some fun. Don't stick around for these ludicrous content droughts, and there always is content droughts, and there always will be, otherwise you're going to get burnt out after you've played for six months on this, like, with nothing has changed, and then when new content comes around, you're not going to want to do it, that doesn't help anyone. But Luke mentions the garrison. Now you can't ask Blizzard to force you out into the world. Because you're not going to give a shit. Just look at the Apexus dailies. But they need to create world events and things of interest that might draw people in through natural curiosity. Not with the, you know, loot on a stick incentive. So let's do an example, right? There's a circle in Shadow Moon Valley. It springs up. And everyone who steps inside it transformed into corporeal giants forced to dance for no reason for a few minutes. It requires no time at all to program in, and it's awesome, even though it has no reward. It's shit like that. It's, it, it's just basic social events. The same reason why it's more fun to go to a movie with a friend than by yourself. You're sharing a crazy experience with them. This is why group raids work so well, and solo world content kind of doesn't. Corina Cattel, could you please make a prediction for how long it will take for another game to have more subscribers than WoW and why? See, I don't think there will be, because MMORPGs just aren't evolving. They're stagnating. I mean, why else do you think Blizzard cancelled Project Titan? It's because it was taking up too much development time, too much money, for something that a tiny game like Hearthstone could dwarf without even trying. Like, why would these companies make these giant, colossal AAA games? They can just make something small, like a mobile game, and make 20 billion times more money. The only reason at that stage you would do it is if it's a passion project, and companies and passion projects don't exactly mix all the time. Louis Tremblay, what do you think had the biggest impact? Like, what do you think made all those 3 million people just leave? I personally think, I, th I think it was just the shitty launch, right? It, it didn't help matters. The fact that a lot of people got locked out, like, they probably just didn't want to resubscribe after that. They probably just leveled up a bit and were like, well, this was worth the wait, unsub. But it's also the lack of content and the age of the game. It's been 10 fucking years, man. And the subpar amount of existing endgame content when you finish leveling to 100 at the uh, expansion launch. It's, it's just been a sloppy expansion from a company that is well known for not being sloppy. It's still got a lot of content, a lot of stuff to do. It's, you know, there's a lot more ex expansion content than other MMOs out there. But that's the thing. Like, the, the company should not be having this many issues. They're supposed to be, you know perfectionists essentially. Just bear in mind though, all Blizzard did was lose the subs gained from the expansion launch. Like they got 3 million subscribers, they lost 3 million subscribers. So we kind of need more data going forward to determine if everyone actually does hate World of the Draenor. And they have said that they have that new token system where you don't actually have to pay for subscriptions, you can just do it with gold. So we'll see how that, you know, rolls over into subscriber numbers. But I mean, even then, like, just because they have more subscribers doesn't mean they're making, like, any money at all.
Anyway, those are my thoughts. As I said, check out the videos linked down below for more uh, more talky things from other people and other channels. I thoroughly enjoyed all those videos, so I, I can basically say that I've crowdsourced them and they're, they're really good, really entertaining, really informative, and that you should check them out. Uh, that's it for me. Have a good one!